Hello and welcome back to the DIY hosting of a WordPress website video series. In this video we're going to have a closer look at Docker files and Docker Compose. So I briefly mentioned in the previous video what a Docker file is and we created one just for fun but the content was complete nonsense. It was just a message that we were using to confirm that we could edit it with Visual Studio Code. But the Docker file content when done properly will involve creating an image by building up a list of instructions from top to bottom and Docker will read those instructions from top to bottom and build the image in that way. Now in our case we'll be using base images WordPress, SQL and Nginx and we'll be creating a Docker file for each of these and the advantage of using Docker files in this way is that we can leverage something called Docker Compose. Docker Compose allows us to orchestrate our containers and run them together more easily. It really allows them to network together more easily. Now Docker without Docker Compose can do these things. It's just a lot more difficult and it's not as concise. Whereas with Docker Compose, we can wrap this up into a Docker Compose YAML file, all of the orchestration, so that we can launch three containers simultaneously, all on the same network so they can communicate with each other, and then we know with just a single command, such as docker compose up, everything goes up together and everything is running as it should. So that's the reason we're going to look at docker compose. So let's go to the desktop so that we can log into the Pi and let's get going by creating our first docker file properly and then by installing docker compose and creating our first orchestration with docker compose. Okay, here we are on my desktop in which I have two windows open. I have my Visual Studio Code editor on the right hand side with the Docker file open that we created last time in the um, website directory. And on the left hand side, I've got my PowerShell, which I'm now going to SSH into my Pi using it. And then I'm going to navigate into my website directory in which I will see my Docker file. So as I say, in the last video, we created this Docker file. Um, I've deleted the content because the content really was dummy content and had no place being in this Docker file. And we're going to now add the first command for our Docker file. And this has to be the first command. And it starts with from. And this is going to define our base image on which this Docker file is going to be based. So let's type in WordPress, because we want to use the WordPress image, colon, and then latest. This basically means we're going to use the latest WordPress image. In the Docker registry, there are different versions of each image. You can actually reference them with a V followed by the version number. But in this case, we want to use the latest and latest is a common tag uh, the image creators use to refer to the latest build. So that is the simplest Docker file you can create and that will work. So if I wanted to test that, I could type in docker build dot. So docker build will build from a Docker file to create an image. And in this case, our Docker file is just pulling the base WordPress image. So doing this is no more than creating the exact same WordPress image that we pulled from the registry previously. But nonetheless, by doing it, we will show that it's working. It's found the existing image on our computer, on our Raspberry Pi, and it's built a new image, which is it has given it this reference number. Great. So knowing that's working as it should, let's move on to installing Docker Compose. We need Docker Compose so that we can orchestrate multiple containers. And we're getting to the point now where we need to introduce a SQL container so that we can actually get our website working. To install Docker Compose, the generally accepted approach is to use Python. So follow what I do on the screen here. sudo apt install lib ffi hyphen dev space lib ssl hyphen dev space python3 oops python 3 hyphen pip. So we're basically installing Python along with some other dependencies. Now for me, I already had Python installed. It comes with the Raspberry Pi, so that saves us some time. And we just wait now for this installation process to complete before we move on further. Okay, with that done, we can now install Docker Compose. So we'll type now sudo pip3 install docker hyphen compose. 
So now that Docker Compose has installed, we need to restart our terminal. The easiest way to do that is to exit it and then go back in. SSH pi. OK, let's clear the screen. Great. So Docker Compose should be installed. Let's confirm that by typing in docker hyphen compose minus minus version. And there we go, we've got Docker Compose running on our Raspberry Pi. So let's create our first Docker Compose file. Right click on your Visual Studio Code editor and type and click on new file. And now we're going to create a file that has to be called docker-compose.yaml, Y-A-M-L. And you'll see that the Visual Studio Code editor has detected this as a Docker Compose file. It's given it a little pink whale, which is the icon for Docker. Great. So we've got a Docker file in its simplest form, which is using the WordPress image. And we've seen that can work by building against it. So now what we want to do is create a Docker Compose file that's simply going to run this Docker file. That's the first step. Admittedly, in its own right, that's not particularly useful, but it will be useful when we've got three different images wanting to be run simultaneously on the same network. So in this simple case, we're going to do the following. We're going to create our first Docker Compose file. Version 3.7, we're going to declare the version of Docker Compose or the, the syntax version we're going to be using. Then we're going to try type in services. And this is where the services exist. So for example, one of the services is going to be WordPress. Another one is going to be SQL and another one is going to be Nginx. So for this service, I'm going to say WordPress. That's the name of the service. So it's worth bearing in mind that that's the name of the service. It's what we refer to as the service. It isn't the name of the container. Build dot what that's saying is i want to build at the root of this directory and because docker compose is in the same directory as our docker file it will build the docker file that it can see in its current directory so that's fine then we're going to type in the container name now because we've used wordpress up to now i want to make this a little bit different i'm going to call it wordpress underscore new just for now, so that we can see this is a separate thing to what we've done previously. And lastly, I'm going to expose certain ports. So the ports command is as follows. You type in ports, colon, and then you go onto a new line, and with a, uh, with a, with a, with a um, hyphen, we then add the ports. And in this case, we're mapping the container port 80 to the Raspberry Pi port 80, in the order of Raspberry Pi port to container port. There we go. So I'm going to save that. So that's our first Docker Compose file created in our Visual Studio Code editor, which has updated, hopefully updated, our Raspberry Pi. So if we go into the website directory on our Raspberry Pi and type ls, we'll see a Docker Compose file and a Docker file. So what shall we do now? We need to actually run this Docker file. To run a Docker file, sorry, a Docker Compose file, to run a Docker Compose file, you type in docker hyphen compose up. And what that will do, it will run the Docker Compose file, which contains in this case just one service, so it'll run the WordPress service. So hopefully it'll just run WordPress. And there we go, because WordPress already exists on our system, it's been able to pull it from the Raspberry Pi, and now it's run it. So if you were to open your web browser, you would see, hopefully, if you've still got your uh, router configured correctly, you would see your WordPress website. OK, so that's going to end this video, but it's a very important first step. We've just created the first part of a Docker Compose file that will be added to. This is going to stay the same, and we're going to add to it when we add additional services, such as a SQL uh, container and an Nginx container. I hope you found this useful and can see why in this early example Docker Compose is going to be useful as well. And if you did enjoy the video and found it helpful, please do like it and please do subscribe to my course. It makes my life a lot easier and it helps me to continue making videos. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video.